Hello, everyone. I'm Ryan. I'm Adam from Games and More. And, of course, this is, of course, Games, Comics, and Coffee. Minus the coffee this time. Unfortunately, yeah, the cafe closed over here. We're kind of downgraded since our last time we're here. But I'm wearing purple for the we're epilepsy the walk. <laughs> we usually have our own place. And I have a Mountain Dew because, you know, I like, I like promoting caffeinated beverages to children. <laughs> yes, and I know kids are looking at us right now, too. So we're going to try to keep going on this and get this finished recording. So I'll let Adam kick off since we're going to the game segments, of course, today. Okay. Well, uh, recently announced, as you know, um, Rocksteady is taking over the Batman franchise once again. They never really got rid of it, though. I mean, no, they, not really. Um, I mean, they said that they were, but... No. <laughs> no, I mean after Arkham Origins was a hit and everything. Well, that was still. but that was uh, Warner Brothers Montreal that did that. Right. Rock City did Arkham City, and I think they probably went right to work on um, Arkham Knight. Mm -hmm. Probably because they knew that it was going to be next next gen platform, and they needed to work. <laughs> exactly. Plus, they also gave it to be a really conclusion because they always said after they started Arkham City that it would be kind of a trilogy. Yeah. But they, well, they, they keep saying the end of the trilogy, and it's like, okay, it's the end of Rocksteady holding on to it. That mm -hmm. is not the end of Arkham. Right. Because they already did say that Warner Brothers Montreal that did Origins, what what do you think of that or not? A lot of people didn't like it. Right. But well, they're going to be handling it from now on. And, you know, you never know. They could get better. Mm -hmm. You know, Arkham Origins was really their first time out. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how Arkham Knight does when it comes out later this year. And I'm super excited for the game because you can drive the Batmobile mm -hmm. on this one. That's <laughs> the biggest thing. The Batmobile is here, finally. The Batmobile is here. Um, we got some new villains coming in. And they have said that the Joker will not make an appearance in this, but I have a feeling he will. Yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> if anything, in flashbacks. Either that, well, he'll be mentioned. We already know he's going to be mentioned. Oh, yeah, come on. They've already shown Harley Quinn's in it. And mm. So why would they? Show Mr. J. <laughs> no, missed my pudding. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Um, one thing I'd like to kind of talk to you about, I know you're a parent. Um, these are T-rated games aimed at teenagers. And mm -hmm. Do you really think that these are appropriate for kids? Well, I think it's, it's very hard to say. Well, it's hard <laughs> to do, too. I mean, I mean, if you really look at some of the DC books right now, especially in the post-New 52, because here we are three years later and everything else, too, about you know, what's violent, what's appropriate for kids, and what isn't and everything. I mean, there was a recent release on uh, the new Teen Titans relaunch, and women of that teenage just don't look right. <laughs> and that's where they were coming to teen, like, I'm not saying that they don't look like this in real life, it's just this is a little overemphasis, especially mm -hmm. for characters yeah. that were never like this too but you know i think it is i mean <coughs> if, you know, if you look at arkham asylum and arkham city and everything there was quite a bit of violence but at the same mm -hmm. time there was part two was like well that's not too different than what i wouldn't see in a batman book now picking up it's almost the violence almost seems to be more menacing of you you have the intimidation you have the threat of the violence correct than seeing the actual violence itself correct correct that's all oh <laughs> we can edit that Got busy around here all <laughs> It's um, after school. Um, it was always more of the threat of violence, and that's what I try to tell people who complain about the violence in the Batman movies. Mm -hmm. It's like you know, you, yeah, they were violent, but you, it was more of do this or I'll blow up a hospital. Right. <laughs> exactly. And then of course, the hospital blew up anyway. But it's Christopher Nolan; he was going to blow it up anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. like, kind of how that works so but yeah i mean even with the fright scenes i mean this isn't much difference that they're really doing so i don't know about really violence wise but at the same time as you know i wouldn't seem to be really under age of eight really need to have this game versus mm -hmm. somebody nine and older mm -hmm. playing it but at this point in time too it's just like yeah there's not really much really it's all down to parenting with this because mm -hmm. yes it is t-rated gamestop walmart they can sell it to your two-year-old if they really wanted to now what's a two-year-old right. doing buying it i don't know <laughs> but essentially they could sell to anybody yeah i mean my, my my son is good as he is with you know games and digital technology i, I he'd be lost he wouldn't even know what to do <laughs> mm -hmm. so parents i say probably okay to buy it just make sure you play it with the kids so you can yeah but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. i mean i don't own a game system and of course adam i had a little conversation right here we were talking about money and what's <laughs> good to spend and what's not good to spend and i don't see myself owning it anytime soon but i don't see myself I, owning really good games outside you know my little uh this yeah <laughs> well i have a ps3 unfortunately the batman arkham origin or um arkham knight is not coming for ps3 nope. um i used to have a 360 i fell on some really hard times had to get rid of it right um 
luckily I was able to keep my PlayStation. But unfortunately, to play this game, you're going to have to buy the new the new systems. And That's, it's coming yeah. out the same. Well, actually, it's coming out a year after the release, so I don't think they're going to drop the price. No, I doubt it. Too, if so. anything, they'll bundle it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like 460 bucks. <laughs> No. no. <laughs> like, how many months do we have? I will probably have half that. <laughs> yeah, see, because I own a house now. <laughs> I'm in the process of moving. And growing a beard. No. <laughs> he can't do shaving cream anymore. Me, mm -mm. yeah, I've got more clean shaving cream. See, your job requires it. I bet, I bet. Oh, I could grow a beard if I wanted to. It's just... Melissa wouldn't be a fan of that. Yeah. Um, so really, let's let's kind of move on. There's a lot of Batman things. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There, this is a this is a very Batman heavy vidcast. Here. Mm -hmm. uh, they've also announced that Arkham Knight. Honestly, when I first heard of that, I thought Batman was Arkham Knight. Mm -hmm. Arkham Knight's a new character. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's, he's actually a new character, and I'm excited to see what they do with him, who he is, and what it is. It, mm. should, it should be very cool. But... Do you think that they'll ever make a game like an Arkham game with Superman involved? I don't or know. This I, I, it's hard to tell and everything. I mean, especially when you look at something like. I mean, the one thing was when Rockstar decided to do Arkham Asylum. They mm. wanted to base it in a way kind of off the animated series world, but still ground it in the comics and where they would like to go naturally in a more mature way. Mm. You know, not really mature, but in a sense to where it was higher up and everything else. So that's that's how it was. I mean, especially having Kevin kind of Conroy, which I'm still mm. hoping will close off the series doing yeah. the last Batman again, because I know I'd be very happy, especially since we already know some of them have returned mm. for Arkham Knight and everything. But, well, I hear that, and this is just a rumor right now, but they might actually kill Batman at the end of this one and then have Warner Brothers Montreal just reboot the entire Arkham series. Man, if you're reading current thing, we all talk about right mm. now where Dick Grayson has unfortunately been killed in the cop race, but he'll be brought back, but he'll be still considered dead for his own spy series. Yeah. I'm this is why I'm not reading DC anymore. <laughs> we'll see in any comic book, in any movie, video game death is never eternal. <laughs> right, exactly. Real life so, it is. Yeah. <laughs> not That's in. not my check, yes. <laughs> so but, let's, uh, I know we could just kind of mentioned um, Superman and everything. What do you think of the new Batman versus Superman movie? Well, the truth is they're hyping it up to death right now. There have been so many interviews. I mean, it's definitely something people have been waiting for for a <coughs> while now and everything else. And after seeing Man of Steel and after all the Christopher Nolan versions and now here we are to Batman and talk with Wonder Woman. I, I just feel like it needs to have been done a couple of years earlier mm. and everything and everything. I mean, this is nothing to do with the cast and this is not the whole Ben Affleck <laughs> controversy. I, I actually have all faith in him oh, as Batman. Same here. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, if you look what he's done the last couple of years, why would you doubt well, that? Well, Daredevil wasn't that great, but well, then again, that wasn't him. That was that, a story. I was going to say, that was a story. It had nothing <laughs> to do with the actors. That's why I said it had nothing to do with the actors. Mm. It was just not a good story. But yeah, no, it's yeah. Even in the R-rated version, I think the problem is what's come out of it because, as they said, the biggest thing is they said, especially with the Marvel movie, especially now here post Captain America: The Winter Soldier, which has been huge. I haven't seen unfortunately because of reasons and Spider-Man coming out. How they were saying to David Goyer, who's writing it, said, "Well, you know, it's just not the right time to do DC and everything." Like I understand his point, but at the same time, they've had plenty of time. Marvel got ahead of them. By like four movies. <laughs> yeah, and then there's other, you know, companies and stuff. I mean, have as as DC though dominated the the T V network with like Arrow and Smallville and now the upcoming Flash series and everybody talked about two other series coming out which it looked really good. They've found a way to work in the T V mode while Marvel is kinda of struggling. I mean, if you look at Agents of Shield, not quite what they Agents were. of Shield struggled at the beginning, but it has picked up an audience. Hail Hydra. <laughs> Mama. No, but they did pick up an audience and um, enough that I guess they've actually signed it on for season two, but I thought maybe they were signing it on for season three as well. Um, well, we'll see how that works and everything. I mean, right now, the thing that's definite is, is Arrow's getting season three and The Flash will have a series. Mm -hmm. So you can guarantee those. But I think it also kind of comes down to, I mean, like, and we'll, we didn't want to throw too much Walking Dead here, but I'm just going to throw out, um, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just going to throw out Robert Kirkman in general and everything, because he was actually at Wonder, ImageCon, I should say, not WonderCon, ImageCon a couple months ago, saying like, well, 
you know, it's good stuff, but Marvel and DC are ruining the business and everything. And I understand, like, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of said to a DC, I mean, I, I dropped Green Lantern after forever, a couple months ago, because I was just tired of what they were doing with the book and the character. But at the same time, DC is, and Marvel are really the titans. Yeah, they are. And Image is kind of right behind them and everything, especially since they were created by people who broke off both companies. Mm -hmm. More Marvel than DC, but that's exactly what happened. But I think a problem also comes is, is why Image is done their good stuff and has done stuff like Walking Dead with Skybound and then work on Thieve of Thieves and all mm. that. I kind of want to say like, well, you've, you've had Invincible be this amazing comic for the last 10 years. Why is it in not in any type of format? Mm. Same, I mean, at least Savage Dragon tried its own animated series ago, you know, 20 years ago, but it lasted two seasons, but at the same time, they give it a try. Mm. Well, see, I heard at one point what DC was doing was seeing how well Marvel had done mm -hmm. um, with building up to the Avengers, which they proved, you know, yeah. throughout like five, six movies and then lead it up to this. I thought DC at one point, I don't know if they're still doing it, was going to try and throw a, uh, um, a Justice League movie what? out and then try and have that trickle off. Kind of like almost the opposite of what Marvel did, throwing the big movie out first and then having the smaller movies come out. Right. I don't think they're going to do that anymore. Well, and now they're kind of trying to do it because I mean, we know Wonder Woman's going to be in Batman versus mm. Superman. And there's been talk about Cyborg and there's been talk about Martian Manhunter. I mean, we don't know. I mean, we're mm. still two years out. They don't even start filming until <laughs> next year. I mean, come on, yeah. right now, the only movie that's big that's coming up pretty soon that's filming out is the new Star Wars film. Yes, yeah. so something <laughs> completely different. At this point in time, I think there's no way to, to really understand where it's going to go until we look ahead, until Superman versus Batman comes out. Mm. And that's still two years away. Because this was filmed 2014, April, before Easter weekend. So, throwing that shout out now. Don't check the date below. This is just <laughs> copywriting this right now. Um, but, it, yeah, I mean, at this point in time, I'm just going to have to say, I think they just had their both ways. Marvel found a way to make it work. And mm. everybody's trying to use Marvel as the model. Mm -hmm. And now Marvel's trying to buy back like some of their characters that they sold off the movie like X Men to. and Fantastic Four. Well, I heard which we will not talk. And Spider Man's the biggest one. I just didn't want to bring it up, but <laughs> I think Fantastic Four because also the whole talking about the, the the reboot making me just scratch my head what they some of their choices they're doing. See, I like Michael B. Jordan as a human torch. He seems good, but I don't know I, what they're I, doing now with the rest of the story and what they're saying. The setup, I kind of went. How could you be any farther away from the original concept of the story? Well, Stanley didn't like the the first one. No, and I understood why. <laughs> I mean, I liked it if you went in there as a like a fresh face, kind of like, oh, you go in there not expecting it to be anything but an uh, entertaining action movie. Yeah. But if you look at it and go like, wow, this is not Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, okay, that's kind of similar. <laughs> right, exactly. It's just like right now with the Amazing Spider-Man 2 here with Gwen Stacy and the Green Goblin. Or, you know, the people are like, well, I didn't know Gwen Stacy's been dead for almost 40 years in the comics. I'm like, well, it's been kind of a staple for now. So even if you're new or old, you know who Gwen Stacy is. And, I mean, it's been great because now you can see that. Because, I mean, she, her character died off a year before I was born. Yeah. <laughs> I even talked to my brother a lot who read comics back then, and he was about eight when that <laughs> happened. But he said himself, like, I remember her. It wasn't until years later that I knew who she was. I mean, mm. me coming into the books, too. I mean, it was Mary Jane. It was Betty Brand. Yeah. And then I found out, oh, oh, Gwen. Oh, I understand all this now with these characters and everything. But yeah. I, I, I have to officially, I mean, because we could be here all day talking about DC versus Marvel movie business, especially with Marvel now announcing Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America 3, yeah. Avengers 3, and yes, they even said, oh, you know what character we're going to do? We're going to have Ant-Man, and here's who's playing here, and we got everything in. So now, I mean, there's a character you never thought was ever going to be on the big screen, Ant-Man. No. And now you, you see the test footage, you see the story, and you go, I want to see that. Mm -hmm. that. That's like right now, Guardians of the Galaxy says, you're welcome. Right now, I think Ant-Man at this point in time and a year from now will be, you're also welcome. <laughs> mm. Well, I know you said DC versus Marvel. Well, you know, that as of right now, I don't know, it could always change, but Superman versus Batman, or Batman versus Superman, whatever you want to call it. Mm. I don't even think yeah. that's going to be the name. Coin. <laughs> Two face. But the, yeah, that movie plus Captain America 3 are both set to launch in 2000, was it 15? Six, no, 16. 16. Same day. Yeah. Okay, right now, who do you think will win? I gotta say, Captain America. I'd say Captain America's I mean, only because it's got a, a bigger fan base. Only because of the prior two movies well, and the uh, Avengers. And the one thing is, is if you look at what's going to happen when Superman Batman comes out, you've got almost a four-year mark between Superman 
you know, man of steel here to that. Mm. Where meantime, coming right off of here, I mean, next year we have Avengers 2 Age of Ultron mm -hmm. and Captain America coming off both those storylines because Age of Ultron comes right off of uh, Captain America Winter Soldier and a little bit of Guardians of the Galaxy, only a little bit, but you know what I mean, mm -hmm. is you got this built in, so everybody's doing that next progression, why everybody's going to be excited, I think everybody will be like, well, we want to see what's going to happen with Captain America, because, you know, even Chris Evans says, I'm going to move away from acting to directing after this, and they've set up the Winter Soldier, because if you know comics, he does become Captain America for a couple of years afterwards, mm -hmm. so. Well, Chris Evans said that he's moving away from acting, um, so they're going to either have to reboot Captain America or do something with it. Or do like with the Winter Soldier and have and Sebastian, have Shaw Sebastian and take over like he did in the comics. You have him, you have Robert Downey Jr. said that he, well, he, at first he said he wouldn't come back for Iron Man 4, but he did say he'd come back for the next two Avengers. Which he's already signed on yeah. for and he's already done his stuff. So who knows what's going to happen with that if they'll do an Iron Man 4. I'm sure that paycheck was pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> he's really got his acting going again after, after Iron Man, so I mean, hopefully. Like, well, you won't have his previous. You know, stuff. Like, he almost ruined his career with drugs and everything, and now twice, twice. <laughs> he, he fell down, got back in good, then fell down again. And now he's now he's the biggest name, the nicest guy in Hollywood. You hear what he did? Uh, oh um, yeah, with the kids yeah, party. The kids, yeah. yeah. Um, for those who don't know, um, you know, he played Iron Man. Well, when um, Captain America three opened up, it happened to be on Robert Downey Jr.'s birthday, so he got twenty kids together mm. and gave them a special screening. Right. I think they had like candy. It was all for Robert Downey Jr.'s birthday. Right. That's the coolest thing. It's like it's my birthday. I'm going to treat you. <laughs> well, and it's like Tom Whittle, you know, Loki. He he actually went and had a kid who was dressed up as Captain America beat him, mm -hmm. gave him a punch and everything else, and yeah, you know, he's enjoying it. He was they were talking about him for you know Thor three. He's like, well, I'm only going to be there too, but he says I want a good out six. He's like mm -hmm. I was just picking up the new Loki series, and I said, you know, if they do that with my character, especially because <laughs> everybody's wanting me to have my own movie now. I think not only could people get behind it, I could get behind where Loki's going after because mm -hmm. that movie's like he's not quite the black and white villain. Loki's not such a bad guy after all. <laughs> he's just misguided. He's misguided. He has daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> what comic book character really doesn't have any issues in some way though? Think about it. Every single one either has a father that was the new is Marvel. Oh, uh, true. She, 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 she has she has mommy issues. <laughs> Okay, so I should well, say... Well, no, what? not there. G. Will Wilson, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love the series. <laughs> but it seems like almost every character has some sort of issue with their family. Yeah. Which then makes it think that, you know, the issues you might have with your own personal family are just leading you well, to be a superhero. Even <laughs> Captain America, even though they only revealed in the last couple of years, I mean, he had major father issues himself, mm -hmm. especially growing up during the Depression, leading to where he got to where he was. Iron Man, his dad was never there. Exactly. He was a workaholic. Mm -hmm. Of course, found out years later he was adopted. That didn't help. You know, Batman and Spider-Man, parents are both gone. Mm -hmm. Superman, but, same. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, basically cast out by her people. Mm -hmm. um, Green Lantern, like I said, died, died when he was young. His mm -hmm. mom was very overprotective and his brothers didn't get along because yeah. they had different opinions. So... Yeah. And Cyborg, no mom, and major dad issues right there. <laughs> D-A-D. This is why I try not to hope my son will. Tyler will never have daddy issues. With him. We know he will. We oh, always have problems. Has. We, have, we have a parental or sibling issue at some point in time. It doesn't matter how good or bad. It happens. Every kid has it. Every parent makes mistakes, but some of them are just like more catastrophic than others and then some of them lead to superheroes so <laughs> so so that's all we're going to say there with Batman versus Superman before this is comics versus comics and mm -hmm. everything else so. so um I know you have a new comic coming out too yes actually we are going to talk about this um those who are watching who've been following because I know I have a lot of subscribers I don't know why but I just do um <laughs> but yeah my life is a comic book reader reached funding um just on my just the day before my birthday in February 28th and everything. And it's a little behind right now, but it's coming back up. We're getting new pages, but I'm hoping to have that for the summer. So it's called My Life as a Comic Book Reader. So what's it about? I mean, the basic um, it's, 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 it's loosely based off what I grew up with with comics and how they influenced my life. I mean, it's, you know, through there, it's also based off a couple other stories. And all things that happen to some other people, but I mean, it, it's a nice, it's a nice story. It's a really nice story from this. You know, it's about a character named Blaine that follows him from three to thirty and everything. But it deals with some questions. I mean, some people are like, "Well, how does that relate?" I'm like, well, you got to remember, you know, when you're young, like, oh, you know, I believed my superhero helped me when I was nine years old. But you know, what happens when 
you're in college. What happens when you're facing, you know, unemployment? What happens when you're facing marriage, becoming a dad? How could that help you in that sense of the word versus? And that's really what the story is. I mean, it could be you or me. It you know, could be anybody. You know, it's kind of interesting is, you know, we've been talking about Superman, Batman, all that. You know, Superman actually came out during a time when the depression mm -hmm. was hitting. And it almost seems like sometimes superheroes, especially the ones that are really there to do good, they seem to come out of the most darkest places. Yeah, they, I mean, they really do. Superman comes out of the comes out of the depression, and look, we're still talking about him. Exactly. Batman came out in like what nineteen twenty eight nineteen twenty eight, and we're still able to talk about. It. He's very different back then. <laughs> well, yeah, and I actually, and I, was, I just finished this for the Spider Man Crawl Space. There's my little plug out there, but I just did a review for the upcoming uh, Miles Morales, who's in, a, in an alternate universe. Peter Parker died, and he became he took on a legacy of Spider Man, but he's going to be facing. Um, uh, characters from the old uh, 60s anime series, the the, the uh, Fly Twins, which Ooh. basically are these two acrobats who do combat and everything. Kind of look like human flies in a way. But at the same time, as you look at that, you know, Spider-Man came out in the 60s, very, very interesting time. Yeah. I mean, you get to a time, you know, you know, the war is way over, the baby boom's kind of, and you're into the 60s, but now you're getting into Vietnam, you're getting into Kennedy, you're getting into change. And then what was so wonderful is about Spider-Man was about changing. He was the average guy who mm. went through all these. I mean, another thing, like, he did the original, he was actually the original reason why the pretty girl loved the nerd. Because mm. he was the nerd. And, Thank you, Spider-Man. Yes. <laughs> and Liz Allen <coughs> was, the, was the pretty blonde who had a thing for the nerd, even though she ran with the jock and yeah. everything else. Same thing with Mary Jane. I mean, despite what you want to say, and we're not going to be here about one more day or moment, but how, you know, in the long run, he got the girl, mm. and so you know that's that thing. But at the same time, he dealt with you know loss of parents, uh, responsibility, neglected, unemployment, bullying. schooling, bullying usually. Which bullying is really what well, people try to say it's a new issue. I th it's an issue that's been around since probably school. <laughs> no, and I, I'm part of the read with pictures, but they were talking about anti-bullying stuff, and I want to say like it's more prominent now in the last 20 years. But I mean, you look at the 60s; they were getting shoved in large. They were doing the old swirlies and toilet. Mm. They were doing some things that it was just bullying. swept under the rug. Then yeah, we didn't want to hear about it. And then our thing is, if you think about that too, I mean, even the way it was depicted. In Spider Man, other books too. I remember there was a um, story right now with the current Nova where they were talking about him getting born, but how it was a little bit, you know, a little bit more, a little key. And there's actually even a point in the story too where it's like, you know what, your type of bullying is kind of bullying in the 60s. You get shoved into a locker, you get yelled at, mm. we all move on. You're not being threatened, you're not being this. And this they, is not to the point where I need to call the police. This is where you are two people that need to work your issues out. And I think mm. that was a good message because mm -hmm. it's like saying, like, no, it's still not right, but this is not. <laughs> it's, severe. It's not always a police issue, but it does need to be handled better. Yeah, and and that's exactly in the way that in Sycamore. <laughs> and the way that story was done too, it worked out very well. So, but I think that's a good little story too. But you know, that's that's kind of it. I don't have much else to say on that. But you know, it's uh, it'll be coming this summer. Do you think if you if